Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to a E3 day one post type of thing that I'm going to do for um, today and tomorrow. Uh, the first day is only going to go over EA and Bethesda's, which um, I'm very excited for Bethesda's. And like only like two things of EA's really. Uh, but first of all, we're just going to go through every single day of it. So um, they're going to go from start to finish, every single thing they announced and everything like that. Uh, so for the start of it, we're going to go over EA's for... Um, well, they they did rubbish, I would say. Literally rubbish. Apart from two things that they announced, they did absolutely rubbish. Um, compared to last year's as well, it's even worse. It's really weird that they only announced like seven games at most, and then they just said that, oh yeah, there's new Star Wars things, and that's it really. Which is kind of stupid towards that. Um, because they could have announced like so many other things, like they could have had the, uh, I think it's the, uh, the Stitch Run type thing, the, uh, the Burnout developers, they could have announced that, if anything, but, you know, they didn't. Um, but if we start off with the first thing they said uh, was Titanfall 2, which it has a single player now, which is going to be a pretty fun thing to have. I don't think most people will probably want to play it. I know that it is like a multiplayer game. It's like a COD. Like, most people said that, oh, it hasn't got a single player, so I don't want to play it. But most games now on, nobody plays the single player. Like, how many people actually play the COD single player or the Battlefield single player? They only play the multiplayer, don't they? So I don't know why everybody was moaning about, oh, there was no single player, there's nothing like that, there's no story to it. It's the same with every single other game. Makes no sense, but I'm still not going to play it. I'm going to play COD, which is exactly the same as that. Makes no sense to me, but I'll, I'll play the single player. I've played every single single player game that comes out for most games now. Um, so I'm going to play that, see how it goes. Um, but then... As well, um, after the actual show itself, I actually checked some things out, and they even said that they're going to include some modes that haven't got bots in it. So it's there's no bots in it at, at all. So it's instead, yes, they had that in uh, Titanfall 1, where they had the uh, Titan on Titan type thing, Last Titan Standard, I think it was called. Um, but this time, they're just going to have it where you could jump out of the pilot and you can view that kind of stuff. It's going to be more of like a team deathmatch type thing, just without the bots and... Uh, the, I know the bots had no AI, uh, no AI uh, titans and stuff like that. They own, they were only there just to be there and be annoying. Um, but it's going to be fun to see something like that. Um, and then they have quite a lot of new features in it. And they did say there's going to be six new titans in the actual thing itself. And this is going to be a little bit longer. I know this video is going to be a little bit longer than everything else. But um, there's going to be six new titans and they're all going to have different abilities. So compared to last year's where they just had all different like sachets and oh, I can't say it. Um, stuff like that, just different builds. This time they're going to have different abilities towards them. So as I've kind of seen from two of the abilities that we've had. Um, so the first ability is like a titan smash. So if you've ever played um, Overwatch and you played as like Reinhardt, he has like a special ability which is like a smash across the floor which kind of stuns enemies. That's kind of what it is, which is going to be a pretty fun thing to have. And then if there's like a lot of enemies around you, you could just smash and just obliterate them. I'm going to guess they just gib and just explode. That'd be a pretty fun thing to see. <laughs> and then the second one is like a laser chest type thing. So I'm trying to think of what it's like. Um, it's like a Superman um, laser sight vision type thing so it just blasts people but it's from the chest and then you can eject from it and it keeps on going and then you can do something else with it as well it's 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 kind of weird to see and then i think in the trailer as well there was like a laser cannon that you could fire i think that's another ability that you can have another uh, another actual thing itself another titan that you can have so yeah that's that's pretty good to have but i know that me and my mates both thought that um it was just the titanfall one like memorial type thing and then it's just going to go straight into Titanfall 2 which it looks exactly the same as Titanfall 1 just a little bit better I know that they're only doing it for next gen and PC now so no Xbox 360 every single game on this is pretty much just Xbox One and Xbox uh, um, PlayStation 4 and PC so they're literally throwing away the uh, the last gen thank god um, but then you go on to the the actual player abilities the pilot abilities where um, I've, I've only kind of got a few of them so there's like uh, the pilot teleport, which it's um, kind of more like a blink and you just go back and reverse. You go back to a different position, which is more like a glitch in uh, Black Ops 3, if you ever played it with that. And then um, you have like a grappling hook now for your, for your, tie or for your pilot, which will be pretty fun to use. You could uh, kind of enhance the, uh, the parkour style type thing. 
like the free running. That means people can't just hide on top of a building. You can actually go and get them with the uh, with the grappling hook. And as well, you can actually um, drag people in with you because I've seen it. In the trailer, right at the end, you can actually drag a player whilst they're in the midair and bring them towards you and then punch them, which is going to be pretty fun to use. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun to have that. Um, but then you have another one as well, which is a fusion grenade. Um, where I, it's kind of like a fusion grenade. It's kind of like a, um, a black hole one, where it kind of uh, leeches in players that are near it, and they just suspend in midair, and then they just get pushed along the map. Which is a pretty fun thing to have, um, especially in a Titanfall game where most people don't really bunch up together, but it still could work. Like if people come around the corner and they all just run towards it, they all just get stuck in midair and they just get leached towards that grenade, the centre of it, where you could just shoot them up and then you just get flung across the map it looks like. So that would be a pretty fun thing as a like, well play, if anything. And then you, ha you, you, you know, in the trailer itself, the first trailer we ever seen, uh, there was a Titan with a sword. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be in the game itself. I'm going to guess it is, so that's probably going to be the third Titan that they've actually announced. I just didn't think to check that one. Um, but then you have that, and then um, single-player campaign. It's got like a little showing of the sword where it can like deflect uh, bullets, which is kind of good. I don't think it's like it deflects it. It just stops them. It's kind of like a block instead of like a deflect. It just launches it back at them. It's more of a just a block just to get it over and done with. Um, but then that's Titanfall 2. Uh, beta is supposed, I think it's supposed to be coming out June, maybe July. Um, but then it actually comes out October 28th. So that would be a pretty fun thing to play and just to, uh, you know, play it a little bit different than Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1. Then if we go on to the next thing that they announced was Madden. Really don't care about that. So we'll move on to Mass Effect Andromeda, <laughs> which, um, yeah, New Galaxy, everybody knows about that one. Uh, new Creatures, which. I just, there was one of them that was more like a berserker type thing where it just ran towards you. It was pretty fun to see that. Um, and then new powers, which there was like one where they had like a mocap suit where a guy was flying across the air and then just ground pounded, which was well, pretty fun to use, I think. And hopefully this game has like a multiplayer type thing, maybe like a co-op type thing. I know the Mass Effect uh, games are more used to having like a single player, but hopefully it has like a two-player co-op since um, you can actually play as... Uh, a femme shep or a male shep. I know it's not a shepherd, but it's easier to just say a femme or a male shep. It's so much more easy to say that. But um, you're not playing a shepherd, you actually just make your own character this time and just play with that one. And you wake from, I think it's a, you wake from a sleep to find, to wake up into a new galaxy. You wake up into Andromeda, which will be a pretty fun thing to see because that means they could have anything, they could make anything happen pretty fun to just look at I think um, and then as well my thoughts of this I think you're gonna have like a Krogan um, sidekick type thing like a partner as a Krogan I think it's gonna be like your main character thing um, it's gonna be probably like the first one you have um, but then towards like Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect 2 you could have anybody and Mass, Mass Effect 1 you could have anybody as like your partner your team up person you could have anybody um, so then if we go on to FIFA 17 um, I'm only really excited for one thing and that's only like the journey which is a single player campaign they actually had to release that early same with the Titanfall 2 single player they had to release those two early because they got leaked um, like really early and everybody knew about them so uh, the FIFA 17 journey, which allows you to go from start to beginning with a player, and it's more of like a cinematic type campaign type thing. Instead of just having like a career mode or something like a manager mode, you actually go through with this specific character, you play through it, and then you have on and off screen um, type things, so on and off the pitch. Um, communication and stuff like that so that means anything that you do off screen or off the pitch actually will affect you in the game itself so hopefully it still just plays like a FIFA game um, if anything I might do like a little uh, let's play in it I'm not quite sure yet I'll try it out why not um, but then you know then as soon as the oh well before the cutscene itself they had a really bad actor why the hell did they have that actor in it he was so freaking bad why it was so bad at just acting. It sounded so robot-like. Like, it sounded exactly like how he did it in the trailer. He shouldn't have picked him out of anybody. He, was, he sucked at doing that type of work. Like, why? Um, but then, you know, then they go on to having uh, manager models. I don't know why they've got manager models in it. It doesn't really matter. 
I know, yes, you could have celebrations towards manager models. It doesn't fix anything. Literally doesn't fix a single thing. All they've added really new is uh, the journey mode, uh, which I would have that. I would play that, yes. If they have the draft still in there, I would use the draft still. Um, but then everything else, I don't really care about. The managers, I don't really don't care about. They had uh, Jose Mourinho go on to there. Don't know why he said, like, a two lines of script and that was it so i don't know why they added that it's just a confusing matter into their game like it makes no sense um and then the managers are only bpl managers so they've only got those it's kind of racist really they haven't got any like international managers i would have probably had those as well if anything um just because of you know euros a little bit better a little bit more re uh, well known for euros but never mind then we go on to a new game. So this is one of the ones that's like a new and nobody knew about. And uh, last year they had Unraveled. This time they've got Fee, which I thought it was Fear. But I was like, wait, no, that's already a game. They can't call it that. So it's Fee. Um, it's more of a Unravel type Banjo and Kazooie type game. It's more of like an adventure, but it's, it looks a little bit more darker. It looks a little bit more grim out of anything. There's no light. There's no anything. There's just white and purple. Which it doesn't really attract me towards playing it, if anything. But it looks, eh, okay. But not really like a uh, a brilliant thing. It's not like an like an unravelled, if anything. Um, it's going to be a little bit different towards those because it's more of a uh, a backwards camera type thing, a third person one, but like above third person. So it's something a little bit different. Um, it's it's nothing that I really like about it but you know we'll go on to star wars next anyway just to get away from fee uh but star wars they have announced um you know the battlefront thing i would have kind of seen a battlefront uh, gameplay trailer for the next dlc they didn't show any of that i would have thought that but they didn't um but instead they announced battlefield 2 Point two, I'm gonna guess they're gonna call it something like that because there's already a battlefront 2 so they can't really call it battlefront 2 plus or something like that I don't know. They, they, they've just confused the entire system of everything. So they can't really call it Battlefield 2. Because there's already a Battlefield 2 that's already come out for PlayStation 2. Like, it's been out for ages. They can't call it that. But it kind of works towards everything else that uh, Battlefront 1 didn't have. So anything towards um, you know, a single player campaign or anything like that. It's going to be changed into that. And then... All the way through that entire year, I know they're going to have a 2018 adventure game, which is going to be pretty fun to have. And then there's another one by uh, Respawn. So the 2018 one is Visceral, and then the 20 or uh, the Respawn one is a third-person game. So those two games are going to be very similar in those two ways. But I'm going to guess one of them is going to be 1313 or whatever the hell it was called, the cancelled one. It's going to be something on that line, and then the third person one is going to be something different as well. So it's going to be something a little bit different towards those, and then they've got, like, anything else, really. They just announced, like, Galaxy Heroes is still out, well done. And, you know, Knights of the Whole Republic still out, well done. And then Battlefront still out, so I don't know why they even bothered with the Star Wars one, really. Like, I don't know why they even bothered with half the stuff. They didn't announce anything. They literally only shown seven games, and that's it. Like, that's not an E3. Like, there's nothing new, there's nothing, there's no real gameplay towards it. All they shown was just a cinematic. It's just always E3. They're always the worst at uh, every single E3 EA. They're just so bad. That's why they're making their own little place. But then we go on to the hype is real game, Battlefield 1, which I cannot wait for that one. I know that in the actual uh, conference itself, it didn't show that much. It only shown like a uh, cinematic um, in footage thing. Makes no sense to why they did that. They should have just shown the gameplay um, instead. So after the show itself, I actually um, watched the gameplay, the multiplayer gameplay. That one looks insane, I would say. Um, but then... Um, everything in the trailer, I would say, is true. Um, so, like, the horses, the trains, um, the seven, or the five player tanks, which I actually seen in the, the multiplayer gameplay, there was, uh, five slots for the tank itself. So that means there's gonna be, um, four gunners, and then, uh, two on, or one on top, which is driving and then shooting at the same time. So that's gonna be pretty good to have. I think, as well, there's going to be a new game mode for Battlefield 1, which it might be, like, a hijack type thing where you have horses chasing after a train, 
because that's what it looked like right at the end of the cinematic trailer where you could um, be, a, it looks like more like an Arab type country, um, more of a desert type theme and then you just have a train that's going down the map and you just try, have to try and just hijack onto it. Maybe something like that will happen. It'll be something interesting to see, but I want to see more of that, if anything. They're going to probably announce something in the fall just before it comes out. A little bit more like a trailer towards those, so it's going to be pretty fun to have. Then if we go on to some of the multiplayer type things, so like Destruction. Destruction is going to be insane to have in this game. Like, it's going back more into the roots of uh, Bad Company 2, but not as in-depth as that one. It's going to be a little bit less, but as well... You know, like the giant blimp that you've seen in the trailer, that's actually going to come down anywhere in the entire map. It can come down anywhere, it's not a scripted event, so you can destroy it in any place. So it can be in the uh, farmlands, it could be in midtown, it could literally collapse anywhere and anything that it touches, it will destroy. And as well with the destruction as well, um, it can actually create like little craters. So you can make little covers in little craters, that means um, if you have like a grenade, you can actually throw it against the floor and it just... Uh, it destroys that floor and then any wall that's like a medium height like your height like an actual person's height You can actually climb that now. So it's no like a small little um, little Like hip thing Mantle anymore is actually a climb feature. So that's gonna be a pretty good thing to have I would say um, and then in the map that they actually shown I don't, I don't I forgot what map it was but that was the one that had like small villages that you could explode anything towards there um it actually has weather changes so any weathers that it's got though like rain sun or fog i think there's only three types of weathers you can have maybe there's gonna be like a snow one um maybe like a sandstorm but in that one you can actually um when fog come in um there was like a sniper gameplay and you couldn't see a single thing it's gonna be a complete different type of thing so that means snipers can't just wait up inside like a tower the entire game like they they literally cannot see a thing from a distance they're just so like unused in that one i would think but then as soon as rain comes in it's a little bit harder for the of the like ears and then sight a little bit it goes a little bit more blurry for sight so it's gonna be a little bit different towards that and then sun you know it's just gonna be normal day um but then 24 player uh players in every school game so it's like 32 for conquest um so that's gonna be okay i think as long as the maps are okay in that way i know that in the um the multiplayer gameplay that they shown they didn't have 32 players in every single game i think they only had like 18 so didn't really show it off i know that 18 was okay it didn't have that many kills and i know that they all had like celebrities and youtubers in there so they weren't really the best players that you could have had really um but then you have like the bayonet charge which is going to be so much fun just to go in and charge into like the trenches and just destroy anybody that's near there it's gonna be so much fun to do that i would think um and then it looks like as well they're gonna have a four player squad again so instead of having the uh, the battlefield i think it's battlefield five and the oh no the battlefield four and hardline where they had five player squads it looks like it's gonna be four again because that's all it had in the conquest map that they uh, played in the multiplayer so i'm gonna guess it's gonna be four player now if we go on to the Bethesda show, um, it's, it's, it's literally, it's kind of stolen the show already, even though Xbox and PlayStation and Ubisoft haven't really played anything, Ubisoft aren't going to ever get to play the game, ever, um, but Bethesda always does well and always shows something that fans want, like, EA screw up and they never show something that fans want, like, Release Skate 4, do it, please, fans want it, and, you know, Bethesda kind of sees that and they just go, yeah, we'll do that instead. So, they're actually making a quick Champions game, only for PC, but there's no limits towards it, but then there's going to be more um, info at QuakeCon, so there's nothing really shown about that one. But then, uh, then they had the Elder Scrolls Legend game, uh, the, uh, the card game itself. I'm like, nah, it's more like a Hearthstone type thing, it hasn't actually come out, but they're releasing more things for the beta itself, and they're releasing like a single player campaign, more like a Hearthstone, so, you know, it's it's kind of like a copy towards that, so there's that. Then if we go on to the next bit, this one's going to be a little bit faster, because it's a lot more like compressed towards that. So the Fallout 4 DLC, um, there's going to be three more DLCs this year, I think it is. Um, so there's going to be one in June, one in July, and then the third one they didn't actually announce uh, when it's going to be released. So um, the first one is called Contraptions, which allows you to have, uh, I think it's like more armor packs. There's um, 
elevators, there's like a sorting system, there's like conveyor belts, anything like that that's more like a mechanical machinery. Um, it's going to be towards that, so it's going to be something a little bit different, especially in like the elevator type thing. You can actually just make levels, no stairs, just an elevator going up. That would be a pretty fun thing to have and just make. I know that I haven't played Fallout in a little bit of time, but I'm actually excited about some of these type of things. Then the next DLC comes out in July. I didn't actually have a release date. I know that the uh, contraption one actually comes out next week, so that'd be fun to play. Uh, the next one is called Vault Tech, which in Vault Tech you can actually make your own vault, which I don't know where you're going to do that. Like, they've they've actually designed a place in the game where you could make your own vault anywhere. So you can actually make your own settlement in like a vault ways. And it looks kind of similar to a Fallout Shelter type view that they've shown off. So it looks like that, where it's going to have like exercise machines and stuff like that. So as you can just build up your characters anything it looks like. I don't know. It looks kind of confusing towards that. But I didn't see that much more about it. But you can just clear out a wall. And there's going to be like enemies behind it. So it's going to be towards that a little bit more. So I want to see something about that. And where you can do it. Because there's only going to be like selected places. That you can do that. It's going to be probably like three selected places in the entire map. And maybe like in some of the ones that are already in construction. You can just add more to it. So maybe they do that in the future. But then the third one. It only had like a little bit of like a cinematic trailer, um, which is Nuka World, <laughs> which is a theme park expansion, it looks like. I don't know, it looks more like a theme park type thing, so I want to see something about that, I think. It might be something towards like a storyline type thing, so that means there's like an abandoned one, and you have to try and reconstruct it, and then there's still missions towards it and something like that, I don't know. It's something towards that, it looks like, but... Then, if we go on to the next one, which is another Fallout uh, thing, it's Fallout Shelter, which is coming to PC. Um, I'm actually excited about that because my phone dot can't run it for some reason. It just breaks every single time I get to a couple of um, f um, thingies, um, followers in there. So it, it kind of breaks and just doesn't work again, so that means I saves don't work. And then there's a new update which actually allows you to send um, actual um, people, uh, dwellers, in there uh, to do quests and stuff like that so that means they can go off and do some stuff gives you some more stuff gives you some more armor that'd be a pretty fun thing to see I, don't, I forgot what else they had in there um, if anything I'll leave a link in the description to a trailer to that um, so there's that and then they actually announced something else so the, the, the Bethesda itself the main corporation towards that um, actually re released the Skyrim remastered Thing, which every knew that it was going to come um, because they actually said that they were working on the remastered version to make uh, Fallout 4 more for uh, next gen. So that's how they actually made the Fallout 4 for next gen is that they had to remaster Skyrim. But they just never released the Skyrim remastered. But now they've actually released that <laughs> and then they're actually including mods to Skyrim Remastered. I, I couldn't see when it was coming out, but it was coming out this year sometime. If anything, I'll put it on screen when I'm editing. But it's coming out this year sometime, so it's going to be fun to play. I never played Skyrim Original because I just couldn't get used to it on the 360. I was playing so many other games, I just couldn't play it and get used to it. I just died so many times. I had the worst luck on the 360 version. So hopefully, I don't get the same luck on the Xbox One, and then I can kind of play through it, you know? I might, I might do a little Let's Play on it and just get through the entire game. Um, but the mods are going to be pretty fun to use, uh, you know, jiggle figures, uh, jiggle physics and stuff like that, you know, everybody wants that kind of stuff, everyone wants it. Um, but then they actually released Prey, I never played um, Prey the first game, but it looks like it's not going to be called Prey 2, it might be called Prey 2, but it's just called Prey that they're calling it. So it might just be like a remastered version, it plays Morgan Wu, or Morgan Yu, something like that, um, where you're kind of a, um, a person which... Um, the government is experimenting on to change some stuff and you have uh, psychological changes towards yourself and um, you kind of, it looks like you go completely crazy. So, I don't know, it might be like a messed up type of game. I don't know, it's, it is Bethesda, they could do anything towards that. Um, but then, if we go on to Doom, um, Doom actually did a, uh, an update for the actual game itself, which um, every single snap map, uh, snap map update is free now so anything that's included in that it comes free and then they're going to have a free dlc which allows you to have i think it's um two new modes um so they're going to come out between then and then they have a play for expansion um which i forgot what it's called 
but it allows you to have uh, three new game modes and then a new kind of demon type thing. I haven't played Doom yet. I might pick it up as soon as it goes a little bit cheaper just to play through the campaign, maybe some of the multiplayer, but the multiplayer in the beta wasn't that good. So instead, they are actually releasing a demo for the first mission. Um, I know that comes out in a couple of days. Uh, actually, it comes out now, I think it was. Um, but it's only out for a couple of weeks. So that means you can actually play the first mission in the campaign of the Doom. Uh, campaign itself, so that'll be pretty fun to play. I might play that just to test it out, test the waters on it. Um, they should have probably done that for the first time ever, just when it before it came out. But instead, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but then if we go onto the Elder Scrolls Online, which um, it kind of focused more on the Xbox and uh, PlayStation conditions of the game, so they're actually releasing a an oblivion type thing for the game i know that pc's already got it which is called the dark brotherhood dlc so it kind of makes you go to i, I forgot what it's called in oblivion i haven't played oblivion in ages but um they go to that place and do the uh, the uh, dark brotherhood quests in there so that'd be a pretty fun thing to play i haven't played elder scrolls online i know me and my mates are kind of looking at it and kind of thinking that yeah we should play it pretty much because it's one of those games that it's like um you can play at any time, but now they're actually including a um, a no level scaling anywhere. So anywhere you go, like, as soon as you load up the game, you don't have to complete the tutorial. You could just wander. You won't die. You won't do anything. Um, I think in the game itself, you had like little level areas, but now you could just literally wander anywhere. You can go anywhere apart from probably boss areas. You can't go there, but you could literally go anywhere and anything could happen. Uh, so that would be a pretty fun thing to do. That means you don't have to just go off and do anything. You could just there's no linear path towards it, you could literally go off and do anything. I think that's where Skyrim did it wrong, but I think in the MMO, you kind of know where you're going a little bit more. Uh, but then if we go on to Bethesda VR, which um, they're actually... I think there's only two games that are only being supported right now, but it's actually coming out in, I think, August or the fall, it's supposed to be. So um, the only two games that they've supported and that are at E3 right now, I'm losing my chain of thought right now but it's only doom and fallout 4 so fallout 4 would be pretty weird to see as a vr type game but uh doom makes sense it's a first person shooter that's a fair enough but fallout 4 is gonna be really weird because it's an rpg a single player type game so it's gonna be really weird to see somebody go for their wrist and you just have to use the little handset it's going towards the vive as well the hcc vive so that means you can enable to use it on Steam and stuff like that. And then, you know, we might see something for Xbox. Who knows? Uh, but then they went on to finishing the show with Dishonored 2. Um, Dishonored 2 actually looks really interesting. I never completed Dishonored 1. I got like halfway through it and just didn't complete it. So I might have to pick that up for the Xbox One and actually play through it and like better game rate and stuff like that. So they actually showed off actual gameplay. Um, the actual placement of the game itself is in Kanaka, which looks more of a exotic and more vibrant placement towards Dunwall. I know the game actually starts in, um, in Dunwall, but then you go straight away, or more of the gameplay is in Kanaka, which it looks more of like a sea type place, more of a tree exotic, as I said, like exotic, more vibrant place, more colour, more sunlight, pretty much, you know, like dark, dairy, type placements there's still sewers and stuff like that but then in the actual game itself there's two playable characters so you can play as corvo or you can play as emily so those two are going to be pretty fun to play i know that emily have got has got a completely different abilities i know in the gameplay itself they actually had like a um, a domino ability so whatever happened to one person happened to the other people that are near him so that's a pretty fun thing to have so you can actually set up like a, um, a shock mine and that person gets stunned and then the other two get stunned so that's a pretty good one it had like a more of like a reaper type thing where you could crawl across the floor as like a, a shadow type thing and then literally pull somebody apart that's a pretty fun thing to say uh, a pretty thing thing to say it's just something really weird um, and then the blink's not really a blink. Uh, with Emily, it's more like a leap type thing, but nobody can actually see you when you do it, so that's a pretty fun thing to have. You still have like a double jump. Uh, there's more parkour type features, so that's a pretty fun thing, and everything else just looks the same, pretty much. Uh, just more vibrant, more frame rates, I don't know. Anything like that, and it comes out on November 11th. Most of the other things haven't really shown anything towards um, release dates. 
just yet, so um, there's only two games for Bethesda that actually had a release date. Uh, but those were just the day one. Sorry that I really fluffed right at the end, but tomorrow's is going to be a little bit harder. I might try and split that up into two. Um, it's going to be Microsoft, uh, Ubisoft, and Sony for those three. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different. I know this was 30 minutes, so I'm going to try and cut it down uh, for the other one. So... Hope you guys enjoy this video and stay tuned for day two of E3. Hope you guys enjoy and peace out.